This is my review of My Hero Academia. Okay, so not a lot happened in this episode. For the most part, the students in Class 1A mostly just picked their hero names and signed up with agencies to become hero interns and stuff like that. So they, just start, so they started with their internships for about a week, and that's going to be a major plot point going forward. And But there is one, two, one or two major developments in here. First off is that Deku finally meets... All Might's old teacher, Grant Torino. I'll get to that in a minute. And we also learn a bit more about what's going on through e in Ida's head as he's trying to cope with his brother being in the hospital. So, so shortly after the Super Fight Tournament and what, what have you, the students of Class 1A are tasked with picking out their hero names with Midnight coming in to judge them. So... With the exception of three, almost all of the hero names for the students were picked. Um, there are a few exceptions, but each character has their own reasons. And also we find out that there were a bunch of people who actually wanted to intern with the students, except for Midoriya, kind of, sort of, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but we also find out that, not surprisingly, Bakugo and Todoroki had the most of anybody with Todoroki having the most overall, but Todoroki points out that it was probably because of Dear Old Dad, so he's not too enthusiastic. And I, and not surprisingly, one of the agencies that Todoroki was actually offered to sign up with was his father's, so maybe that's going to be a thing? Probably not, because Todoroki hates his dad, but who knows. And then everybody starts picking their hero names with three exceptions Shoto who doesn't really want to be well he doesn't really know what kind of hero he wants to be and is still struggling with it but also he doesn't want to be associated with his dad so he just pit, put his own regular name um Bakugo who was too violent and T Ida who actually has a pretty good reason why he doesn't pick a name right away so apparently his after when he went to visit his brother his brother told him that he can't walk anymore. His weight, his legs don't work anymore. And tells his younger brother that while he can't be in Genium anymore, he says that now Tenya actually has to take up the mantle and become the next in Genium. So already Ida has a lot of pressure put on him by his older brother. And that's kind of a problem because now because now Ida is already in an emotionally vulnerable state but now he has to kind of live up to the hero that his brother was and he ha and while he is told to take up the new mantle of in the next Inganium he can't bring himself to do it and instead just writes his own name and meanwhile Deku writes down well Deku because he realized that he, while he did was used to insult him as a child he realizes that now it has a different meaning and he's come to grown to like it and decides to use that as his hero name and shortly afterwards they're all given their agencies to pick out and are given a list and it's explained that the pe that the people who had offers were given a list of people who gave them offers to choose from whereas the people who didn't really have any th offers made were kind of just given a generic list so so Deku is struggling to find an agency until he's approached by All Might, who tells him that his old mentor, Gran Torino, actually did give him an offer. But it's quite evident that Gran Torino kind of scares All Might a little bit, because throughout the entire conversation, All Might is shaking in his boots and is having trouble enunciating. So it's quite clear that this Gran Torino guy is a bit scarier than people might think so it's cl it's clear that Gran Torino might be a bit of a hard ass and it's revealed later that he does live in inside an old abandoned building toward the end of the episode so it's quite evident that he isn't a normal superhero and isn't your typical mentor so clearly that's going to come back to bite Deku in the ass because he does indeed sign up for 
Gran Torino's mentorship, but doesn't really know what to expect because even All Might's scared of him. So clearly something is different. But also, All Might points out that Gran Torino also knows about One for All and how to properly train somebody and that he used to be the old teacher. So clearly, the original user of One for All who gave um, Toshinori his powers and became and he became All Might instructed Gran Torino to help him in any facet of his life and help him train to become the next symbol of peace. So, so there's clearly a history there. But shortly after this conversation, people start people actually do start going off to their new agencies and figuring out what they're supposed to do from there, and they all bring their costumes with them because they have to. But but Ida is kind of cold and dismissive during this whole thing, and and while Deku and Uraraka try to push to actually find out what's going on with him, he kind of just dismisses it, even though they're friends, and then just walks off to go to his and hero agency, which is revealed to be in Hosa City, the same city where Ingenium actually had his hero ship agency. So we're go probably going to see him tr struggle a little bit emotionally in this next coming couple of episodes. So that's going to be interesting to see. And Deku even laments on the fact that if he had pushed a little bit harder to try and figure out what was Ida was feeling, he probably could have saved him from what was about to happen in the next coming month. So clearly something is going to happen. And it's also during this episode where Deku actually does find out about Stain and what he kind of thinks he's done in the past. About how he's killed 70, 17 heroes and put 30 more in the hospital and permanently out of commission, one of which was Egan Ganium. So, clear, so clearly Stain has a bit of a reputation and I can understand why Ida would be a bit upset because I think I know what he's going to do next and I don't think it's going to end well for him. If, I, if he does what I think he's going to do next, then that could be a problem. So, so we'll see how his emotional state develops over the next couple episodes because... I'm, I'm genuinely scared that he is going to do something stupid and get himself seriously hurt. If, if he does what I think he's going to do, he's going to get himself in some serious trouble. And somebody is going, and he's now going to be able to pick up the pieces afterward. But we'll see. So, yeah, this episode mainly is, was mainly to showcase just what kind of mindset Ida was going to be in for the next couple of episodes. And it's not looking good for him. But he also... But we also get to see the kids get picking out their hero names. Bakugo is still undecided because he kept, kind of kept just picking some of the some hero names that basically mean death grenade or something like that. So clearly Bakugo needs to work on his hero name. But I'm interested to see what's going on. And I will admit some of the kids actually had some pretty good ideas for their hero names. I mean, some of them got turned down because they were too violent. For example, for example, Mina tried to go with Queen Alien, Alien Queen, which didn't really wind up working because the Alien movies. So obviously, she she had to change her name to something stupid like Pinky. But I mean, that actually is her name, I think, Pinky. But yeah, there are and there were actually some reasons reasoning behind why some of the people picked their names. For and some of them are obvious. For example. For example, Shito or whatever his name is, um, the kid who can basically basically he picks the name Sugar Man. I forget what his name is, but there was a but there but there's a kid. I know who I'm talking about. There's a kid with with the ability to give himself super strength depending on how much sugar he eats. So uh, he went with Sugar Man. I I don't know what his name is though. Um, but yeah, there was also some other names people who picked some who either were inspired by other superheroes such as such as um what is what's his name Kirishima picking the name Red Riot after the superhero Crimson Riot who he takes a lot of inspiration from and wants to be just like him when he gets older so and then and then Sue picks the name Froppy because it was her nickname for most of her life and she kind of likes it so yeah there were some genuine reasons why some people picked their names and I'm definitely interested to see how they're going to live up to the names they've given themselves. So, if you guys have seen this episode of My Hero Academia, what do you guys think? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. 
or over on my Discord server, link in the description. Anyway, if you guys didn't enjoy it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to check out my Facebook and my Twitter in the description below because I post channel updates over there and it's important that you guys keep up to date with what's going on with the channel. So be sure to check, that, check it out over there. And also, if you guys want to help support the channel, then be sure to check out my Patreon. It's only a couple bucks a month and I like making videos for you guys and a Patreon is the best way to do that and help me fund future projects. So definitely be sure to check those out in the description below. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace! Oh, that's how we do it. Trailer door is locked. The key's probably in the security guard station. I doubt they let us borrow it. We need to, do we need... Hmm.